actually shot this video on the day of the bubbly that was way back in October and I forgot about it. So now I am editing and re-uploading that video because I think it's interesting, you know, because only once in a full moon do I try a new activity like this. So here's me trying to do rock wall climbing. <laughs> So this is me trying to climb again after doing the finger exercise at the fingerboard and I'm well it wasn't e easy afterwards actually because I got very tired at the fingerboard so by this time I have lost a lot of strength in my fingers I always assume that people who rock climb would have a lot of muscles would be very bulky but it turns out that you don't need muscles to climb you just need to strengthen your fingers, you need to strengthen your grip. That's the most important thing. And the second important thing is that when you're climbing and you're resting, you have to put your weight onto your feet. Otherwise, when you're using your arms to grip onto things, that you will get tired very easily. And another tip is that before you actually climb, it's best to assess which way you're going to go, which um, stone or which thing you're going to grab onto when you climb. Um, that way you will get to the top the fastest and you will save a lot of energy. And I think this is actually my fifth or sixth try. I was very tired by then, but I was so happy I got to the top, sort of. Rock climbing was a very strenuous exercise. I was starving after that and we immediately went to the restaurant I love. If you're in Yangon and have nothing better to do, I would definitely recommend um, trying the place. It's called Climb O'Clock and it only costs 20,000 jet per person. You get three hours to the whole place by yourself and if there's no one booked for the rest of the day then you can stay for the whole day the instructors don't mind at all so yeah at this time Nato wasn't even spayed yet she just got her hair shaved because she had a lot of um, rashes on her body and I was taking her for a walk um, at this national park and the funny thing is that she didn't like this park at all because it was filled with skateboarders and they were making a lot of noises with the um, sewer coverage lids so she didn't like the place at all even when i was throwing the ball around she wouldn't chase it so we decided to drive to another park isn't she very very spoiled though <laughs> imagine driving to another park because your dog doesn't like the park that you took to this is the infamous Myanmar plaza that is now boycotted in december uh, because recently there was an incident with the military and the protesters. There were five protesters urging the shoppers to participate in the strike against the military. And the security started chasing the five pro protesters. And when they caught up to them, they beat the hell out of the protesters. So now the plaza is on the boycott list. 
I think Matt don't like this place because she can go, she can roam freely anywhere she likes. It's far away from the main road, and there's lots of green grass, and she has lots of friends. Um, also, the people uh, who regularly walk at the park know her. She loves being the center of attention everywhere. So the next day, I am at the monastery during my morning routine, feeding the stray cats. And I'm not sure I've told you in depth about why I started this YouTube channel. Well, it's to help these cats. I want to open up an animal shelter. Um, and I want to move all these cats to my shelter as well. <laughs> Because even though they're in a compound, they are not safe from human danger, from dogs coming in and, and getting at them, or being roadkill in the compound itself, because people would just drive recklessly into the compound in high speed. And I have seen kittens being um, roadkill two or three times by now. So yeah, I want to open up a shelter and take these cats in a safe place and also other cats in Myanmar. And opening up a shelter, it's, it's not that difficult, to be honest. I can borrow money from some friends and families and I can start it up very easily. But the real troubles and struggle will come in, in the maintenance of it. How am I going to continue feeding the cats? And of course, once I open up the shelter, a lot of people are going to come to the shelter and abandon the cats. Or people are going to call me and see an animal is being abused and ask me to rescue it. So I will need continuous um, cash inflow to help the cats. And I don't know, I guess you could say I'm scared. I'm scared that I won't get the continuous cash flow and I'm not a rich person. I I won't have I don't have any money to to continue the maintenance of the shelter for the long run. So I thought, hey, um, what if I have side money um, where I could use all of that into opening and keeping up uh, with the maintenance of the shelter that would be pretty cool right <laughs> um, then I won't have to continue looking for fundraising or asking for charity from anywhere that I know of course that will only happen if this channel is successful so don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can give a home to these stray cats or dogs or any animal that I see. See you in the next video.